In our special topic, we're going to discuss negative and zero exponents. Consider the table that we have here. We have the power of 2 to the 4, which is 16. 2 cubed, which is 8. 2 to the second, which is 4. 2 to the first, which is 2. As we continue on, notice there is a pattern in that table. So in the pattern, you'll notice that the number starting at 2 to the 4th power is 16, 2 to the 3rd is 8. Notice that they're being halved each time. So when we get to 2 to the 0 power, that is 1. Anything with a 0 power will always be 1. Notice that 2 to the negative 1 is 1 half. We're going to discuss the pattern a little bit more on the following slides. Negative exponent rule. For any integer n and any non-zero number a, a to the nth power is a reciprocal of a to the n. That is, if you have a to the negative n, if you have a negative exponent, it's a reciprocal of its positive. It's its opposite. It's its reciprocal. So, in example one, we have 3 to the negative 2 power. Let's talk about what is 3 squared. 3 squared is 9. What is the reciprocal of 9? Five. 5 to the first power is 5. What's the reciprocal of 5? I'm going to pause the video. We'll work on examples three through six and come back and check our work. So note that in each of your answers, one way you could do it is put the exponent to be positive. For example, in example three, 10 cubed would be 1,000, but since it's a negative number, it goes in the denominator. It's its reciprocal. In example six, we have x squared, but we don't know what x is but it's x to the negative square, so we're going to put it in the denominator. It is a very small number. Now remember the zero exponent rule for any non-zero number, a, a to the zero power is one. So in example one, five to the zero power is going to be one. x to the zero power, no matter what x is, it's going to be the zero power. So it's going to be one. In example three, 10 to the zero power is going to be? Now let's look at example four. We have x to the zero power plus y to the zero power plus z to the zero power. So the solution for number four would be three. Let's look at number five, example five. We have three x to the zero power. So three x to the zero power is three. Then example four, we have 10 x to the zero minus five x to the zero plus three x is to the zero power. So in this example, 10 x to the zero power is going to be 10 minus 5x to the 0 power, which is the same as 5 times 1, plus 3x. 3x is to the 0 power. So it's going to be 1. 10 minus 5 is 5, plus 1 is 6. Now, scientific notation may also have negative exponents. Recall when you write numbers in scientific notation, it has been for large numbers with a positive exponent. Now, scientists also use scientific notation with negative exponents, which means their numbers are going to be very small. So note the chart here. You have a power of 10 to the 0. That's going to be 1. You have a power of 10 to the negative 1. As we had learned in previous slides, this is 1 tenth. So now that in decimal form is going to be 1 tenth. 
10 to the zero, excuse me, 10 to the negative two is one over 100. You can put that in decimal form. Note the pattern. Oops, excuse me. Now you get the picture of showing a negative exponent in a fraction and a decimal. Note that, say for example in 10 to the negative 1, this is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 1. If we had our decimal and had to multiply this times a negative 1, we would move the decimal back 1, and there our answer would be. In this problem, the next one, this is the same as 1 times 10 to the negative 2. Your decimal point would be here. You would move it back two places, 1, 2, and so on. So, oh, excuse me, I need to put this to the negative. The sign of the exponent shows you which way to move the decimal. So let's look at a few examples. Scientific notation, as you can recall, in example one, when you're writing a number in scientific notation, the first part has got to be greater than or equal to 1 and less than 10. So in our first example, we have 6 times 10 to the third power. So when you would move the decimal on the 6, three places to the right, would make it 6,000. So in our example 2, we have 6 times 10 to the negative third power. Which means if you started where the decimal was, moved it three places left, one, two, three, your final answer would be 0 0.006. In example three, we have scientific notation with a positive exponent, which means you will move, be moving the decimal to the right four places. In example four, we have it with a negative exponent, so we would move it to the left four places. One, two, three, four. The exponent in the power of 10 denotes which way you're going to move, either to the left or to the right. So I'm, we're going to have some examples up here of the number 5a and b. Write the number in scientific notation. I'm going to pause the video. We'll come back and check your work. So notice in your first two examples, we put them in scientific notation. Negative exponent indicates the decimals move to the left. Okay, two more examples. I'll pause it and we'll come back and check our answers. So we have 5 and 46 hundredths times 10 to the negative 6. And 4 times 10 to the negative 2. Now we have examples of 6a and b. I'm going to ask you to write this number in standard form. Again, look at the exponent. It tells you how many place values, how many places to move the decimal. Note the answers for these two. Are on. Note that in the scientific notation, in A, it tells which direction to move the decimal and how many places. Same in B. Please remember to put a zero in the ones place. So it would be zero point something, zero point. So now we're going to do C and D. I'm going to pause the video and we'll come back and check our answers. Okay. So note, 45 hundredths for C, 6 and 55, 6 and 55, 6 and 54 hundredths for D.